Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician The Civil War. Well, I've installed the major, and I do mean major, economy update to the game. Uh, and there's a lot to cover here, but I'll try to cover some of it uh, as we go along. First of all, you'll notice right here on the map, there's these economy alert, uh, alerts. And for example, it says here, economy alarm. Uh, this important infrastructure point could trade approximately 97% more goods if enough transport capacity was available. Build markets or construct railroads nearby to increase transport capacity, higher trade revenues, increase sales tax revenues, and the pr uh, productivity of nearby companies. Uh, so that's the case for all of these things. Available workforce in this area is very low at 39%. Try to recruit less soldiers from this state and avoid creating new or upgrading existing companies nearby. So, uh, that's a different kind of economy alarm altogether. Uh, now, in addition to that, let's go ahead and take a look at the new projects screen. Uh, there's all these different projects and depending on what you invest in these different categories, and actually I'll show you the categories first uh, as far as finances go. So we had this before, but it's slightly different now. You're investing in politics, economy, agriculture, industry, military, and diplomacy. And as you invest in those areas, these projects get worked on. So for example, here, administration reform, uh, cotton is king, civil order. Uh, and then of course there's military ones over here. Um, so subsidy funding, for example, adjust the related subsidy slider and finances panel to change the speed of funding. Uh, this will get new weapons, Whitworth rifles, uh, ironclad turret ships available from the British, 12-pounder um, Napoleons, 1853, um, Cannon de l'Empereur, the James Rifle. There's a lot here. I'm not going to go over all of it, but basically they've completely reworked the, the system of finances and industry. You also now have the ability to build specific buildings. So if I want to get a hospital, I can go ahead and build a new hospital for $1.5 million. Maintenance a year is 20 k um, so we're going to go ahead and, and it tells you what happens by doing these things. Mortality rates are reduced. Oh, you get to pick where it goes too. Um, by a further 0.5% per day, recovery happens 100% faster. Uh, so, uh, where do we want to build said hospital? Seems like maybe probably Richmond because that's where we're dealing with the most casualties right now. Um, see where we can put that in here somewhere I don't know exactly how this works there we go hospital constructed cost 1.5 million so we got to keep an eye on our finances of course we just can't be spamming all kinds of new buildings federal buildings is what these are hospitals market what does a market do it um, increases the uh, transport capacity uh, of all of my various points there news agency ah didn't mean to do all that so here we go news agencies employ reporters writing stories published in newspapers that improve flow of information around the nation this includes information about military movements providing a new source for military intelligence gathering. Uh, the prison camp, uh, what's that gonna do? Paroled soldiers very often return to their units and continue fighting. Um, oh, so it allows us to parole them or send them to POW camps. Interesting, so that's cool. Military Academy, improves commander attributes and prepares them to wartime command. All officers with a military academy in their home state benefit from improved military education and culture. So there's a lot here, boy, that um, it's gonna take an entirely new playthrough to really make the most of all of these various things. So we're certainly gonna have to do that again. They made so many big changes. You can now look at just the garrisons over here on the right. It makes it a lot easier to do that. Uh, the campaign fleets. So the interface is a lot better all the way along too. Uh, and then of course railroads we can build. That was always available, but now the interface for where that happens is a little different than it was before. 
you can see here our hospital getting built. It's uh, 26 days till it's complete. All right, we've got a battle here. Army of the West. This is going to be a tough one. Uh, Gideon Pillow commanding the Army of the West. I thought Stonewall Jackson commanded that. Oh, that's right. He, we lost him to a wound. Um, is going up against the First Corps of the Army of the Ohio. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. I think we can handle it, though. All right, well, I went to deploy. I was going to deploy along the river here, and it appears that he's already there. Uh, so it looks like we're going to back things up a little bit. And I think we're going to deploy at a right angle right in here. I think that'll be a good spot to go. I was afraid this might happen. He's just going to try to go around me because he wants the objective. And I probably should have thought of that rather than just automatically assuming he would attack me because he's not he's gonna go for the objective all right so we're gonna have to redeploy to deal with that I'm gonna send Bagby's division down there first I've already got Ransom's cavalry headed that way or at least I thought I did and we'll start shifting over to deal with him Okay, so rather than going that long way over here, he was going to try to cross right here and get on my flank. So I've got Ransom there with the Purple Aces to try and just hold them from being able to cross immediately. But you can see he's he's sending more help over there. So uh, we've, we've got Bagby's division is going to move in right here. And then I think we'll probably just go ahead and start advancing with McCulloch. See if we can't hold these guys in place here. We'll bring Polk over. Get them on that side. All right, Mississippi Brigade is going to be the first ones to actually get into action here. They're going up against some cavalry. But he's still just trying to shift right past me. Hopefully McCulloch will grab these guys. Keep them from advancing any further. And then Polk's got to get in over here. He's going for the objective though, I think. Alright, so let's pull Ransom out. And shift him down. While Polk moves into that position there. How's Mississippi Brigade doing? So far, so good. I want to get the Königsberg Marines firing on that cavalry. Let's get two units firing on one there. All right, McCulloch, come on. All right, let's send out some skirmishers. Move the guns. Come on, pull, get it, or, uh, purple aces, get over there. Alright, we'll get Polk up there. And we'll get uh, the rest of Bagby's division online. So far, so good, I think. Casualties are pretty even, and uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's got cavalry, which has probably got rifles that are firing much faster than mine. But that means they're going to run out of ammo faster than I do. hold you right there while Polk gets into position I'm not entirely sure what is happening here right now let's get the bad company up in here too oh there's still more coming Taking his time getting online. All right, here's Rex's Raiders. The Miss 
specific brigades going to be in some trouble here. They've got all of these units firing on them. They're taking a lot of casualties. time to get through those woods. Alright, yeah, we know. Chalmers is losing, Mississippi Brigade is losing a ton of men. They're approaching 50% casualties. It won't be too much longer before they're there. Alright, Texas Brigade's in. Missouri Iron Brigade online. So I want to get the Texas Brigade firing over here. To help support what's happening here. Alright, Purple Aces, get over there, please. to get into position. There goes the Mississippi Brigade, and I figured that would happen at some point. Ugh. Why is their range so short? Out some skirmishers. Ransom, what are you doing? Come on. This is not not going well. And it doesn't help that McCulloch's not engaging. That's Custer. Alright. Something about line of sight over on that side. Ugh. Taking more casualties than we're dishing out. That is not ideal. Who was wounded? Commander of Rex's Raiders, Anderson. Right here. Yeah, this ain't going well. Nice to see Ransom finally getting into position. Alright, I've decided to go ahead and pull out here. This is not a situation where I can win, and I, I can't handle losing this many casualties. I just can't keep doing that. I don't have the manpower to do it. So, if I don't have a situation where I can inflict significantly more casualties on him than he does on me, then I've got to withdraw, and I've already lost a lot. So, 2,400 casualties for him, 2,982 for me. Uh... Yeah, it's just not a good situation at all. So the good news is that, oh, we just fought this battle. Why is, why is it happening again? We'll deploy to defend because he's not offering battle. Uh, and hopefully that allows for the French Expeditionary Corps to get over here and help out. All right, what do we have going on here now? We've got, all right, this is a good, good, good situation here. We've got the Army of East Tennessee. Uh, we, we sent them down to hit that 4th Corps. And the Fort Ayers garrison here is also involved in this one. Um, that's interesting. They're going to arrive in 12 hours from the garrison to help out. That's cool. Um, yeah, we wanted this battle. I sent them down there to deal with them. And this is an opportunity to destroy a smaller enemy force. So let's hope it works. All right, so I dug in right here just because the objective's right here and I knew that with all these woods it was pretty limited the direction he could come from. So he's coming down from that road. I assumed he'd come in down the road 
and I'd be able to get out on the flank here and, and hit him that way. But looks like he's going to try to come back through the woods. So we'll go ahead and pull back across the creek and await his attack. The, the garrison from the fort has arrived, so I'm pushing them up this direction. But I think now I'm going to move them into a reserve position here. When Barksdale get back, there we go. So this is the Division d'Italia that's on the right side. Alpine Mountaineers, perfect battle for them. And it looks like they may receive the attack. We'll see what happens here when the cavalry gets down. He's going to be into my line of sight here in just a second. Oh, looks like he might deploy a little short. I don't know where the rest of the men are. Strawberry Plains Bridge. That's a cool name for a battle. I've been to Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. I think it's in Jefferson County in East Tennessee. So it appears he's definitely going to hit me on the right. So we're going to bring Nathan Bedford Forest Division back this way. And then bring them up on my right side. Bring the Kuiper Dragoons across. This attack's going to come right here. Oh, he's got artillery up there. I'm going to have to go try to deal with that. Once I get forest on the other side. And then we're going to push Greg in to get on his flank. And do the same with Davidson. Bring them up. It's a lot of artillery, and I'm honestly really surprised he's able to fire it from up there with all those woods. All right, not a good situation for his skirmishers there. We've got three brigades firing on them. About to have a fourth. Everybody going long range here. So we've got who's firing here? We've got the Sandhill Red Hats, First Georgia, Bourbon Rebels. Over here, the Sandhill Sharpshooters, and then the Kuiper Dragons. The Kuiper Dragoons, not Dragons. Swamp Riders in a reserve right now. I use them if I get an opportunity for melee. All right, looks like Forrest is getting into position now. I thought he had three brigades. Take a look at the order of battle. No, he's just got the two. 69th Thomas Legion, Lone Star Brigade. This is already showing as a victory. It's not going to take a lot. Alright, I am going to mount Barksdale up. And uh, see if we can't go after that artillery. Bourbon Rebels are firing on these guys. Nobody else appears to be there, so let's push forward. Alright, Barksdale, hit the, hit the battery. We gotta disrupt them. Charging up the hill, in the woods. Not ideal use of cavalry, but it's gonna have the desired effect even if we just disrupt them. Because he had no protection for those guns over there. Now he's going to move forward. Now we're going to get some action. Let's let Barksdale recover. He looks like he's in good shape. Now let's hit the other battery. Kentucky Colonels, 1st Sardinian Infantry. We're going to bring 
forest up here on the flanks now. We've got the numbers. He doesn't have nearly as many men or units as I do. Orphan brigades in reserve. push forward. Nice job, Barksdale. Took out both batteries. There's still one more here, but I'm not too worried about it. Much better casualty situation than the last battle. Star Brigade's getting some fire now on the 1st Brigade, who is now outflanked, so he's pulling back. Let's dismount Barksdale and just kind of hold him where he is, up on the hill. I'm going to bring him down so he can get, get into the action. This one's going to be over pretty quickly. How are we doing here? Everybody's doing good. Sardinian infantry taking some casualties. They're about to get their perk. We haven't seen a lot of action with this army, so it's nice to finally get them some action. There we go. I'm going to give them a deadly volley. Alpine Mountaineers, they've taken a lot of casualties, but that's okay. Somebody has to. Alright. Now we just pour the fire into them until they can't take anymore. We've got fire superiority pretty much everywhere. There they go. They figured it out. They're out of here. They're starting to get surrounded. Looking good. Only 1,800 casualties to 5,000 for the enemy. I had a good, strong position, and he had to attack me. So it was a winning combination. All right, 5,500 for William Harney's army. Well, his, his corps, his fourth corps. About 25% casualties. Uh, really, really good for us with the Army of East Tennessee under Stephen Dill Lee. Now, I think now that we've hit that force, now we can advance back into Eastern Kentucky. All right, well, I guess how this works with the project is once enough funding uh, has come in, you can appoint the project. Uh, so here, we can unlock level one of this project here, Cotton is King. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Each level of this project further improves relations with the European nations. Of course, we already have that, so I guess there was really no reason to do that. Trade deals. Allow better prices when importing and exporting goods. We'll go ahead and do that. And then it looks like we're getting close on some of these other ones. Railroad construction, cast artillery, cavalry carbines. All right, to take some of the pressure off, uh, we're going to move the Army of the Kanawha up to Marietta, Ohio. I've got the Army of East Tennessee moving into southeastern Kentucky now. Uh, we're still pretty much surrounded in Virginia. Uh, in Richmond, but we've got to somehow find a way to get the pressure off and I've got to win this fight here so we can start pushing out. I have no idea where the French are. My Army of the West disintegrated after their loss and so I'm having to reform them in northwestern Arkansas and now we're in the process of moving them back to Memphis. We've got a pretty significant disadvantage in manpower now. All right, we're going into action with our army in central Kentucky. See if we can't finally drive these guys off and make a push toward the north. 
we've already got a significant advantage toward victory here, so it's really just a matter of pushing forward and finishing it off. We've got to find out where he is. He's going to be somewhere in this area over here. All right, so I was moving uh, to get in position along here, and it looks like he was already coming around this way. So that's where we're going to meet him. Buckner's division here, Magruder's division here, and then we'll worry about the rest. Let's get Sterling Price to divert his artillery. We've got a nice wide open battlefield here. Looks like Braxton Bragg is going to make first contact. This is the 153rd Gordon Brigade. Magruder with the 51st Highland Division. Now he's pulling back. We're waiting for our divisions to receive new orders. All right, I'm going to hold Zolikoff for there just in case there's more somewhere. Although I don't, don't think that's going to matter a whole lot because this battle is going to be over pretty quickly. I don't know what Bragg's doing. All right, Buckner's in position. I'm sending Greer up to deal with that artillery, which he's doing now. Yeah, we're going to be pretty aggressive here because, uh, and see that, just like that, the first contact we make ends the battle. He was already pretty close to losing. We just had to kind of force the issue a little bit. Charge. Hit him. All right, so we've pretty well dealt with business in Kentucky. All except for our, we have three armies across the Tennessee-Kentucky border. We had the army on the east side, the army here in the center, and then the one on the west, the army of the west. And that's the one that lost. So that's the only place we're dealing with problems right now. Okay, now I have no idea what the French are doing, but there are Union armies in that area. So hopefully they're keeping them occupied. I'm waiting for my army of the west. I don't even know where it is at this point. They're still over here. They're starting to move and reconstitute and get back toward Memphis. We've got to get them moving up because this is kind of a three-pronged attack into Kentucky here, and it needs all the parts to be moving. Army of East Tennessee, I'm trying to engage the 4th Corps. I'm going to go after them. I've got a base of supply now. Army of the Kanawha is now in possession of Marietta, Ohio. Looks like the British are still operating in central Pennsylvania and kind of the state college area there. So they're at least keeping the Union somewhat occupied. And all of that is having the desired effect to where there are not nearly as many units threatening Virginia as there were before. We do have an issue here where the First Corps is going after Petersburg. I may have to Looks like we have our hospital now. Oh, we can upgrade the hospital. Excellent. Cost another three million to do that, but totally worth it. All right, so let's do this. Let's send Longstreet with the first corps to go deal with that first corps before they take Petersburg. Oh, there's an army of New England coming up. That might just be an army headquarters, though it is. Gonna put him on offensive. And actually, I need to do the same for the second corps and the Army of Northern Virginia because that way they'll reinforce each other when the time comes. All right, we're gonna upgrade farm mechanization to level one. Do we have any other ones available? Trade deals. Yeah, that'll increase profit from foreign trade deals. That's cool. We'll do that bunch of things available over here. I don't think we need reborn muskets. 
Recruit agents. Improves intelligence gathering. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, okay, so there's only so many points invested, and you have to choose what you spend it on. I see how that works. All right, starting to make a little more sense now. Even though all of those things were available once I spent the upgrade on one, I didn't have the other ones available. That's cool. That makes sense. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, not a lot there. 60,000 even when he gets everybody. And 40,000 of it don't come for 19 hours. We've got a distinct advantage here. and We've got to win. I've got to get some wins in and around Richmond. Uh, that's where we're really hurting right now is in Virginia. All right, we've been moving up this way toward Mechanicsville, assuming he'd be out here somewhere, and he may be. Um, been getting reinforcements steadily. The second corps just arrived, though I doubt we'll get them into position before nightfall. I'm just going to keep moving the first corps up. Hood's kind of at a low morale situation right now, so I'm keeping him in reserve. I'm going to keep pushing the cavalry forward. All right, he has this objective here, so he may be in this area. But I want to try and spot him with my cab before I move my whole army and run into a bad situation. All right, there's the end of the day. Now we can get everything reorganized the way we want it. All in along here. I don't know how much time I have, but right now I've got a huge advantage, 80,000 to about 22,000. They're both showing 1,000 casualties already, but those are leftover casualties from previous battles. Uh, nothing from this particular combat. So I'm going to push everybody forward as quickly as I can. Uh, I need to hit him and destroy him before the reinforcements arrive on his side. But even if they do, we've got a pretty good advantage. I'm hoping we're going to spot him right in this area here. Yep, there he is. He's dug in. So we're going to sit right across from him with a couple of divisions, but then attack on the flanks as best I can. I've got swamps. We've got hills. He's He's got a really strong defensive position, but we've got the numbers and then some. And we've got to take advantage of it as quickly as we can. So sexy division is going to lead the attack on the left. I think these are actually replacement units, so I'm going to pull them back. I'm going to bring Hood's division up behind the Sexy division. Anderson's only got 4,500 men in his division. We've got to get those units reconstituted as quickly as we can. Because I've got Hood's division with 11,000 men. And then we've got this division here with only 4,500. That is not going to work. Claiborne's got 8,400. So we'll lead the attack with him. McClaws only has 4,800 4, as well. Start bringing up the artillery. But this all just has to happen fast. I can't sit around. Yeah, replacement depot needs to pull back. Come on, Claiborne, get moving forward. Sexy Division's moving slowly across this difficult terrain. I'm actually going to pull all these hurricanes back over to this hill. This is going to be a tough attack. I'm going to go ahead and move Cox Division up just to engage these guys to keep them from being able to turn and face other threats. Let's bring Claiborne right up to the water. All right, Virginia Legion makes first contact. They've got nervous troopers right now. That is not an ideal situation. Let's get Gonzo's Gators up there. But he pulled out of the fortification, so now what we need to do is we need to get 41st Alabama right up there, Tar Heel Legion right up there. We need Claiborne moving into position quickly. We 
We need fire on all sides. Uh, this is gonna be bad. This keeps up. But that's okay, they're keeping them occupied. Hood's division's right there with 10,000 more men. In fact, I'm gonna move them in and I'm gonna have them just kinda leapfrog right over the sexy division just to keep up the pressure over here. Come on, Cog, get up there. Labor and push forward. Gonna attack on all sides. Maybe one of those battles where I take more casualties than him, but look at how low his morale is. It's not going to take a lot to break him. We just need the pressure. And I need these guys to move. Get moving. Come on. So here comes Hood's division, marching right past the Sexy division, which is what I wanted. Longstreet's own, Calgary Highlanders, can give them iron discipline. All right, deal with those guns. Black Watch. Yeah, boys, hit them. those gators get out here on the outside let's have three on one here Tar Heel Legion push forward New York Copperheads he's got a good defensive position we've just got too much firepower all right I think the Black Watch took care of the guns Push forward, Hood. There we go. We got him. Who was wounded? Commander of the Fighting Conks. Mori, right here. Dabney Mori. Deadly volley, let's give them. Alright, we got this. Press it. Come on, Hood. Attack. Push forward. The only thing I'm worried about now is that his reinforcements arrive before we finish this. Oh! Second core. That's what I was worried about. It didn't, it didn't shift the bar, though. It might still as they arrive, but too little too late. We got them. Beautiful. A much needed victory. Now that's at Petersburg. Uh, that's south of Richmond. We still have the forces north of Richmond to contend with. But at least now we've got a victory that's going to help hopefully with the morale a little bit. All right. Beautiful victory. 8,000 casualties for John Peck's second corps. That's uh, over a third of his force. We lost 3,000 men in what was actually a pretty difficult attack. And uh, it worked out pretty good. It's November 4th of 1863. We're getting right around the time here in a couple of weeks where historically Lincoln's giving the Gettysburg Address. But uh, no end in sight to this war at all. Interestingly, the commanding general of the U.S. Army, whose current command, is, that's kind of interesting. He's the commanding general, but he's only in command of a division. Uh, the 3rd Division of the 1st Corps Army of New England. Uh, has been wounded in action. Whereas Joe Johnston, who commands a corps, that's, it's really kind of weird. I don't know if there's a way we can replace that, but neither one of our commanding generals is even the highest in his own chain of command. Kind of a weird thing there. He's up to 456,000 men fielded to my 261. He's got almost double the manpower now. And it's only going to get worse, I'm afraid. What kind of manpower do we have sitting out there? Um, available to be recruited, I'm curious. 
Oh, we've got a ton of... we got 305,000 available volunteers. Good night. All right. All right, we're going to wrap it up right there. I do have a couple of new patron units to get recruited, so we'll have those recruited and available for the next episode here in a couple of days. Uh, I'm definitely going to uh, get into all of my armies and recruit new um, replacement depot units so we can keep all of our patron units topped up at about 3,000 men. Uh, we're also... Uh, my chair's making noises. Um, we're also going to go ahead and build some new forts because we've got... 300,000 available manpower. So we're gonna start fortifying everything uh, and recruiting units for all of those forts so we can hold the ground we have currently in the south while we start to make advances into the north and see if we can't win this war in the next year or so. We'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.